Good morning from Thailand, Chiang Mai. We are here at CEFL and I'm here with the director, John Quinn. Good morning. Good morning, Nashanta. It's been a lovely course so far and we really wanted to share with you guys a little bit about our TEFL experience and, you know, find out some more information from John about what's, um, what this course is about, who's right for this course and what it can do for you. Okay. Yeah, so John, I'll jump right into it. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about CTEFL. Okay. It's past history, recent okay. changes, and plans for the future. Okay. Well, our school manager, Ying, she's also my wife, we, we founded the school originally in 2004 in Chiang Mai. Uh, we started the TEFL program in 2006. Uh, teacher training had always been an interest of mine, something I always wanted to do. So I was the first trainer. Uh, I still am uh, one of the main trainers on the program. Uh, I also do other things as well, involved with marketing and that, and that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, so that, that's how we got started. Uh, very recently, we moved to our new location. Uh, the Shanta and Mustafa are the members of the first group who, who have actually trained from the first their first day at the new location. So this is my new office. Yeah, and it's beautiful here. When we were looking for the new building, we thought we'd come across a boutique hotel. And I think the locals also think it's a hotel. We will post up some pictures of the outside to show you how lovely it is as well. All right, and moving on, who, do you, who would you recommend to do this course? Who's the ideal candidate for a TEFL? I think it's a very general, wide description because anyone can do this course, really. Uh, our, our job is to train people to, to the required standards, so people who have a weakness maybe, they've been away from an academic environment for many years, so grammar could be a challenge, uh, maybe they're weak with computers, what, maybe they're very shy and inhibited about standing in front of people, teaching, the thought terrifies them. Different people have different needs and we give them that extra support so they meet, meet the requirements. We've, we've had people from oh, a wide range of countries, native and non-native speakers. Uh, many non-native speakers, uh, uh, often they understand the language better than native speakers because they actually studied the structures. Oh, Sorry, yeah. itchy nose. That's alright. <laughs> uh, we have a wide range of ages. Uh, I think the youngest we've had is 18, the oldest is probably somebody in their 70s. Oh. Uh, we employ people in their 60s, teaching part-time for us. Uh, but most people are aged late 20s through to late 40s, early 50s. Wow, uh, that's, that's incredible. Yeah, yeah. We, we have a, not an equal mix of male and females, probably a few more males than females is typical on, on any course. Right, you mentioned age as well as native and non-native speakers. What about academic requirements? Okay, to work legally in Thailand, to obtain a work permit, you normally need a university degree, right. a recognized university degree. Uh, if you're teaching at a formal school, the, the requirement is very strict. Mm -hmm. If you're teaching at a non-formal school, such as a language school, there's more flexibility. Right. And it depends on the support your school's willing to give you. Uh, if you teach at a university, <clears throat> surprisingly, uh, a degree isn't an actual requirement. Uh, because, because, well, it could be the university's requirement, but it isn't a legal requirement because the Teacher Council of Thailand doesn't supervise universities in Thailand. They supervise, supervise formal schools. I see. Interesting. So there are options even for those who haven't completed or haven't done a first degree as yet. We, we've had many people on the course who don't have a degree. We've mm -hmm. got people on the current course without degrees. Right. Uh, uh, there's, there's information on our website that clearly yeah. explains the situation. Yeah. If people ask me questions, I will tell them the truth that normally they need mm -hmm. a degree to obtain a work permit. Uh, and then, it, then it's up to them, their, their decision. Right. Uh, we, we employ around 77 teachers in Chiang Mai, in and around Chiang Mai, mm -hmm. and maybe around 15 don't have degrees, but they have visas, non-immigrant B visas and work permits. Right, and that is, um, that they don't encounter problems working here on the non-immigrant visas. Right? Our teachers don't encounter problems. They're, they're employed through us. We're a non-formal school. Non-formal school. So you, you're mentioning that you employ teachers as well. Is I remember seeing on the website, which we will post a link to at the bottom of our video, 
that there's an internship you can do with the TEFL course. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. The internship is a fairly new program. It's around two years old. Uh, we know some people on our courses, they want full support. They want a job guaranteed for them. They want right. visa work permit support. Uh, they, they want to arrive and then everything else is taken care of for them. Uh, and that, that's what the internship offers. It offers a, a placement for one semester uh, at a school, normally a government school, could be a private school, in a provincial town, somewhere in deepest Thailand, <laughs> away from Starbucks, McDonald's and, and Western influence and culture. Uh, a unique, a unique experience. Uh, it's, it's also aimed at people who want to get a taste for TEFL teaching. Maybe they just want to try it, see whether it's for them. Right. Uh, it's also aimed at people maybe taking a year out from work, mm -hmm. uh, taking a career break, and, and then possibly, probably going back to their original careers. You mentioned that this internship caters for persons that want everything taken care of uh, beforehand for them. They arrive and they have all of these things set up for them. What about what advice would you give to people that are coming to Thailand or probably Southeast Asia for the first time? What are some things that they should keep in mind or expect or prepare themselves for? Okay, you 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 attended our cultural uh, uh, cultural awareness training, so you're more aware of the differences here. Mm -hmm. Until you've actually received cultural awareness training. Lots of things are very confusing right. and they could be frustrating. So I think it's very important to receive this training. Yeah. Uh, you, you can pick up a lot of information from the internet by reading books, uh, but, but usually face-to-face -face training is more effective. Uh, it gets to the ideas very quickly and then you can discuss, ask questions yeah. if you're confused. Yes, on day five of our TEFL course, we the entire class was taken for a cultural day of training experience of the culture and, and norms in Thailand. It was very enlightening and I think that any course should be um, providing this to persons wishing to teach in that country. It's very useful and it gives you a lot of insight into what you need to do and how you need to act around the locals as well. I would say in general, people coming to Thailand, whether it's to teach, retire, whatever the reason, they need to be open-minded and flexible. Uh, things are very different here. If you just roll with things, you don't react to them. Uh, if you just accept Thailand as it is and don't try to change it because you won't be able to, <laughs> you'll have a much more positive experience. Very true, very true. Okay, so uh, coming down to one of our last questions here. How common is it for students? It sort of ties into what we were discussing before about internships and jobs. How common is it for TEFL students, when they finish their course, to find jobs or get placements in schools? There's a number of factors beyond our control when, when trainees look for work. Uh, the time of year uh, is important, uh, the, the, the qualifications of the teacher. Uh, the appearance and behavior of the teacher is really important. Thailand is, is a conservative country and teachers are expected to behave conservatively and dress conservatively. Mm -hmm. You may be a very well qualified teacher in your home country, but that uh, maybe the long hair or not shaving your face for two days could be, could be a deal breaker. So it's attention to detail. I guess it's more for men. Do they look at men more closely than women? Perhaps? Uh, or is it across the board? Uh, probably across the board, yeah. Mm -hmm. Across the board, yeah. It's just dressing appropriately, which is right. behaving and dressing conservatively. Good. And being polite as well. So we're about to wrap up. Do you have any final comments or anything mm -hmm. you'd like to share with our YouTube family? Uh, just really my experience of TEFL teaching and traveling was I, I always wanted to travel. I knew I was looking for something, didn't know what it was. Uh, when I became a TEFL teacher in Chiang Mai 18 years ago, uh, at the end of the last century, <laughs> uh, I found something that suited me and uh, the travel bug disappeared and it's just something I enjoy doing and I can't imagine doing anything else now.
it, it may not be for everyone. And uh, I think not everyone who completes the course stays as a chapel teacher. Uh, but, but it's certainly an experience, whatever happens. Indeed. So, thank you for watching, and thank you, John, for having this interview with us. Please check our links below, and we will be posting pictures on Instagram and Facebook, and on our website, apparelnewmass.com. Please remember to hit like and subscribe. Goodbye from Chiang Mai. Bye-bye. So, what do you